uh, is Ken, who's going to talk uh, JK antennas. Uh, I don't know if he's with us yet. So, uh, oops. So let's uh, stand by for a moment and we'll, uh, we'll bring up uh, Ken and JK antennas. I'm not able to, if you're able to hear me, Rich, I'm not able to start my video. You have not given me permission. Uh, hang on a second. Let me stop the screen share. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. You are, you're up. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. First of all, I wanna thank you folks um, uh, and uh, John Miller for giving as an opportunity to present. Uh, my name is Ken, I'm from JK Antennas. We are relatively a, still a young company. Uh, we are less than 10 years old. We started in 2012. And uh, when we got into this business, everybody makes antennas, uh, whether you're a home brewer or if you design or modify. So, making antennas, whether it's a wire antenna or a Yagi. Uh, you know, we've all been doing this for a long time. So when we got into this business, we asked ourselves a question, uh, what's gonna be different? How, you know, electrically, most of us can design probably a comparable antenna. So you're not gonna find too much differences. Uh, on, you know, I'm talking about the qualified antenna companies. Uh, you can't find too much differences, but you know, how do you set, you know, what's, what's that small uh, difference that would bring customers or, uh, you know, uh, hams to you that you, your product would start selling. And so we started focusing uh, from day one on quality and how to make these products survive anything that you throw at it. So what we did was, uh, I'm gonna start sharing my screen here for a second. Uh, I'm, blind, I'm flying blind on this. Let me know if you're able to see my screen. Yeah, we're seeing your screen, that's fine. Okay, so when we, uh, so, so one of the primary goals was we started to look at design, we started to look at quality, and some of these pictures that I'm gonna show you here on this very first slide, uh, this is how we have been, that's from day one. So you fast forward to 2021, the product is still going to look the same. So we spend a considerable amount of time in getting it right from day one uh, in terms of not compromising on quality. Uh, what do I mean by that? It's not to say that uh, there are inferior products out there. It's what do we, what can we do better for the money that we spend? And we, so what we found initially was for X amount of dollars, you can build a product. And if you spend 20% more, you can build a superior product. So that's what the focus uh, became into building robust antennas, uh, the electrical design on one side, and then mechanically, you know, you need to make the best product possible. This way, you are able to put up an antenna up on the air, whether it's, in, you know, Perk in Florida or up in, in the Midwest or Northeast, where you have snow, ice, your antennas need to survive. So that was the primary motivator. That was the goal in making the best product. So we started organically, uh, and I have to tell, we, 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 I personally spoke to a lot of hams out there who have got big stations. 
and I, their feedback was very useful from the get-go, uh, what to do and what not to do the, in terms of building a quality product. So when we started, when we started doing this, we kind of, I, I, I'm, I'm putting the slide out there because we, these are two of my friends whom I've been talking to for a long time. I mean, these are, you know, these are the guys who you talk to on the air. So when I was saying in 2011 that I want to do something like this, uh, 9K2GS and A41MO were the ones who kind of pushed me into this. I have to say that because I was still vacillating. And that antenna is still up in the air. Uh, it's the first prototype in 2012. And it's a 2040. And that design still works today. So if somebody buys a 2040 Eagle from us today, that's an identical mechanical electrical design, no changes, as well as the mechanical design. I'd insist on the word mechanical design again and again because we've got it right from the day one, whether it means elements or whether it's uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the boom. Uh, the, uh, we, I worked with, we, before we even made that first prototype, pretty much knocked on doors. Uh, we uh, kind of went to it, went with, uh, I don't know, maybe cold call a lot of folks who knew what they were doing and got their input. And that's the first stack you'll see zero, zero. That's, that's our first antenna on the top. The second antenna, actual production antenna on the bottom. That's serial number 001 and 002, which is still up and running in Muscat Oman, A41MO. But the reason I bring this up is going back to the same point, we had to get it right. That was what the differentiator was, uh, you know, in, in, in order to succeed. And that's what slowly started bringing, uh, in fact, our very first Dayton, I think it was in 2013, we just wanted to go and announce to the, to the folks out there that we are here. Uh, you know, this is a new company and this is, and we just wanted to announce our goal was to make a presence and let everyone know that this is a new company. However, much to our surprise, we walked away with lots of orders. And what we did was we took the hardware, uh, the, such as the clamps, the plates, the mounting hardware and everything. And once folks started looking at it, when they saw the elements, they saw the quality. And I still remember, I have uh, uh, Dr. Bill Maxson and for AR, he was one of my original customers. He walked in, he, st he stood there and he was one of my customers. And then he would not stop. Bill Maxson, Dr. Be Dr. Maxson would not stop. He would go in the next couple of days, he would bring someone else to the booth. Uh, you know, that's how I met Clive, GM3POI, who started doing the same thing that Bill Maxson did the next several years. He would bring someone to the booth. So the word of mouth is how we became, uh, you know, we kind of got into this business in a, in a positive way. And we, uh, we, we kind of, uh, it, it, it's been a long road, even a short time. And uh, we're very happy with that. Now, I kept saying that we use quality hardware uh, the goal here is to kind of show you, for example, everything that you see, whether it's our saddle clamp, uh, which is here on the, I'm sorry, I'm flipping through pages. Uh, it, the, the saddle clamp on the top left over here, uh, all these, everything is custom made. When I say custom made, these are, the saddle clamps are, the aluminum block saddles are machined from like a, a bore stock, we call it. It's like a 6061T6 bore stock and they are machined clamps. Why is it important? The tolerances. When you have a three inch OD mast or a two inch OD mast or a two inch OD boom, you're talking about tolerances. The clamps ID is probably uh, 2.01 or 2.02. So it's tight tolerances. You need to have a certain amount of tolerance, but uh, we have been very successful. You tighten them properly, uh, these, these clamps don't slip. Now, the same way uh, when it comes to U-bolts, uh, we do 
this is a regular company that makes these U-bolts, but this is a custom part. You will not find this off the shelf anywhere because this has our JK part number attached to it. And this is custom made to our specs. And it's a 304 stainless steel. It's a flattened U-bolt. Uh, it's, when I say it's a two inch, for a two inch OD mast, it's exactly tight tolerance for a two inch OD mast. So why, why, why am I bringing this, why this picture? Why are we showing this? It kind of, to kind of show you even a U-bolt that we use, we make sure that is of the right tolerance, the right fit, and it is sturdy and superior. So when you buy a product, it's not gonna be, you know, I'm, maybe I can go to McMaster Core or somewhere and get a bunch of U-bolts or I can go wholesale and get some U-bolts. No, this is a custom made, it, they call it a wire. It is a, it's, it's a custom made U-bolt to our spec. So when you buy an antenna from us, everything is made to spec. It's, we try, we try very hard uh, every day uh, to keep up with it. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, sometimes when you see a, a, a small a feedback coming from the customer, we do course correction, but everything is custom made, whether it's the uh, boom, uh, boom clamps or the uh, uh, mass clamps, the mass plates, uh, everything is custom made. Uh, and that's how we started focusing and getting into this business. Again, to kind of show you, uh, this is a custom made band clamp. We call it a band clamp, but it's a boom clamp. This, it's a 304 stainless and it's a 316 thick and it's a solid. So we have, we use three sizes of booms. We use a two inch boom. We use a two and a half inch OD boom. Uh, we also use, uh, uh, you know, the different boom sizes, but we have custom made band clamps. These are custom made again. Uh, you can probably buy them somewhere uh, of galvanized or probably a die cast aluminum, but this is stainless steel. Again, this is a port number that we have and that's made to our spec. So anything that you buy in that, an in that antenna, when you buy an antenna from us, you can be assured that the parts, the, uh, the workmanship, everything is like, if I had to do this in my house, you, let, me, let me put it this way. If you're a ham, you have the time and money and the effort, and you like to do a good, pro you know, you like to build yourself a good product. There are a lot of home brewers out there who who do a lot of great stuff. That's precisely the kind of uh, enthusiasm and workmanship you will see into a product like this, because it's take, you know, we we took the best of what's out there in terms of feedback, and it came into a product. Uh, we, one of our initial, so the first antenna, I, you know, in the, in the earlier slide I showed you, our very first antenna was, you know, <laughs> may, we didn't start small. We, we, started, we started at the biggest antenna and then we <laughs> came to the smallest one. Uh, we were lucky from that standpoint that somebody was willing to uh, 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 have faith and try it, you know, uh, and uh, the very first antenna that we built, the prototype or serial number one, was a uh, 44 foot boom, three inch OD. And uh, it had, it, it was like a uh, 250 pound antenna. So we started big and the first antenna was a 2040. So the 40 meter was a very crucial uh, aspect of that initial antenna. And we had to start, you know, our, we have two types of 40 meter Yagis. One is of course the full size uh, 40 meter Yagi. Uh, the other uh, uh, Yagi, which we also have, which is our popular one, which kind of, I would say, uh, when I mentioned Dr. Bill Maxson's name, uh, you know, he came and bought that product from us, the, sh the shortened high Q coil loaded 40 meter Yagis. Now that's kind of been one of our initial uh, 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 secret to success where we were able to build quality uh, 40 meter elements with our high Q coils. And I'm gonna go, as we go down the slide, I'm gonna kind of touch more upon uh, why these 40 meter Yagis are very good and, uh, and, and, and what makes it so different. Um, number one is you're seeing these coils. These coils are made of solid rod. Uh, they're not tubing. Uh, they are a quarter inch solid, 6063 or 6061, uh, depending on which 
uh, jig we use, uh, but they are solid rods and uh, they are wound. And then on the ends, we do not use any kind of crimping or it's, it's welded, there's a standoff. Uh, it's, a, it's like a nubby thing where you, the, the rod goes in and then it's, it's TIG welded. So it's a welded standoff, which mounts to your element, uh, which you uh, threaded through. So mechanically and electrically, this is a very far superior uh, system where, you know, you know, so far it's stood the test of time for us everywhere that, you know, uh, number one, the goal when we went in, I mean, you, you know, you can get carried away in the forums sometimes, but when you, when you look through, when you read a lot about making coils, uh, which we kind of have finally took us time to perfect it, uh, you know, we, we did go with a very big manufacturing outfit that made these coils for us, and then we brought it in-house. Now, <clears throat> now, what's great about these coils is that they are very high Q. What, what do I mean by very high Q? Well, you know, you can ask me, did you test it? You know, well, uh, well we, somebody did. Uh, what it is, what it is, is that a perfect coil from what you can read is a square shape, right? You can't make a square shape coil. You know, you, you want to make it, you can make it. But uh, our coils are probably, if you, if you say, if the length of the coil is like six and a half inches, uh, the diameter is also approximately six inches. So it's almost like, and, and it's, it, it's the diameter is the, is the uh, open air coil uh, with, the, with the highest Q. Uh, can we do it over a form with some wire? Yeah, but uh, this is the best. There is a downside, folks have said this, and I understand that, uh, which is, you know, when you have packed ice or snow, I would say that at that time, the coil is the least of your issue. If you have packed ice and snow, it's all over the element uh, and, you know, it automatically detunes your antenna, uh, uh, ice or anything else on the elements, uh, you know, it, it, adds, it, it, it does act as a uh, kind of a jacket, and, you know, which means your velocity factor uh, you know, uh, kicks in, and then the element are automatically, you know, it's, it's a, it goes to a different resonance. So how many days do we get ice and snow? If you're living in somewhere in that, that, that kind of an area, maybe you want to put something over on top of it. I don't know. But we have had so far no issues uh, with this construction. It's solid mechanically, and electrically it is far superior than anything else out there. So that's how we constructed our 40 meter 80. So we have the similar type of coil construction for the one on the right, the picture on the right is our 80 meter coil. I think that picture was sent to me by KZ1W, um, Grand Saviors. Uh, this was, you know, his installation was like six, seven years back. So this is our, one of our biggest claims to fame, uh, which is uh, our 40 meter, our high Q coil. Uh, we kind of, again, from day one, we perfected it. Uh, we didn't take any shortcuts on this. So that's how we came in. Uh, going back, you know, I was talking about the block saddle clamps. Now the top left-hand side picture, which kind of very clearly shows you, that's a mass clamp. And there's a, you know, it's, you know, it's a mass plate and the booms on the other side. Now, let me put it this way. If you buy an antenna from us today, that's the same type of clamps you would get for your big Yagi's. You know, I'm talking about the uh, forum and full size or the 80 meter Yagi or the, uh, the combo multiple big Yagis. That same clamp, this is from the very first prototype until today, we have the same clamps in place. So we, you know, again, going back to, we got it right from the day one, we wanted to do this right. And again, that's a picture of our high Q coils. Uh, and that's a kind of lot of aluminum up on the air uh, from several years back. It's still up there. It's a K8 excess, just a kind of a space filler out there. Now, one of the reasons why we have been successful where, you know, there are a lot of quality products out there, but where we have been successful is uh, our elements are, you don't, we don't sell a version that's 70 miles per hour and a version that's like 120, 125 miles per hour, none of that stuff. When you buy an antenna from us, it's 100 miles per hour rated. Now define 100 miles per hour. The technique that we use when we use a mechanical 
uh, software program like Yagi Stress, which Kurt, Kurt Andrus uh, uh, has written. Or we also use, we compare sometimes with uh, uh, DX Engineering has got a, a, a good software called Yagi Mechanical. Now, when you go, you know, some of you probably have the software. Uh, there are a bunch of options. You can select the wind speed, sorry, the wind spec. You know, you have 222C, you have 222G. We, we don't use any of those specs. We just say no spec. No spec is as good as having, you know, you, you know your antenna surviving inside a wind tunnel at 100 miles per hour. You, you know, you, you kind of tie your antenna up on a roof of a car and drive at 100 miles per hour. That seven eighths on the reflector is the one that's going to bend first. That's what it means. It's not like at 100 miles per hour, the antenna is going to fall apart. What it really means is it shows the weakest tubing at 100 miles per hour that's first going to bend, not going to break. It bends. You know, it, it goes past its yield. It's not going to come back. So that's what the 100 miles per hour uh, really means. Now, I've been asked a lot of questions on could you, uh, could you make a uh, 130 miles per hour, 140 miles? Yeah, we have. We have a few customers. In fact, uh, we have a couple of customers uh, who we have built, custom built. But I can tell you, so far, based on our experience, when you build a 100 mile per hour straight line wind survival antenna, you really uh, are not going to have uh, an I. I you, you throw the rain, uh, wind, uh, ice, snow, anything at it, it smiles at it. We, we've had, I mean, maybe it can happen any day, uh, but you know, we've had uh, these uh, antennas survive in Florida, or uh, I've gotten pictures from uh, Winnipeg where uh, you know, it almost looks like a bent noodle and then it springs back up. Uh, most antennas survive in, in uh, you know, the only time when, you have bad issues as ice. Ice is no, all bits are off with ice. You know, it's it's because of the asymmetrical loading that sometimes you know they they do. You know, you're lucky if you get ice and half the time you survive. You done we we done our best, but beyond that, sometimes it's uh, ice is one thing <laughs> you, you you can't really uh, you know put your uh, you know you can't hang your head and say oh yeah it's going to survive ice. If it survives it, you know, it, it can take the best out. Uh, however, we focused on not having a 120 mile per hour, or we said this is the 100 miles per hour straight line wind survival, no spec. And um, it kind of dovetails into when you build an element this strong, it automatically takes a lot, like for example, we have a four element full size Yagis, we have uh, uh, 80 meter Yagis, 40 meter Yagis. We don't trust the elements. There's no element trusting, simple period. When you build an element to hundred miles per hour, you do not need to trust it. It's, I, you know, you, you can come and give, I mean, we initially thought we need to trust elements. We were also on the same, but once, we saw the results from the field, and when when we when you got a lot of confidence uh, with your with your uh, mechanical uh, uh, construction, uh, element trussing really doesn't. In fact, I have seen cases where the element trussing is actually detrimental to your to your elements because half the time you end up trussing your elements and putting uh, 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 forces on a spot where that element is not properly reinforced and it, it kind of acts as a detriment. So uh, we have just, we decided from the get-go not to trust elements. And so far, whether it's a full size or, uh, you know, it's sometimes very humbling when you get uh, customers. Uh, I had uh, Mr. Bill, K4WMS, call me the other day and he was very happy that, uh, you know, they got a lot of ice uh, in, in Virginia. And uh, he kind of said, "Hey, you know, it, it you know, it, it, I was, I was worried, but it, it, it came through, came through nice." So, the 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 reason why you build a heavy duty and a proper antenna is you don't need to, kind of, you know, again, listen, I'm talking about an average ham QDH. If you live in, 
in a, in a spot where you have constant blowing winds. I mean, I, I, I probably I'm going to show you some of his pictures. Uh, I have Mike uh, in Crete. He's one of my earlier friends and uh, who turned into a customer. Uh, he has our antenna. There's, those elements are not trust, but he gets winds which comes up the bluff where he is in, in Crete. Uh, they, are, they are nasty winds. And you know, you, you know, if, if your antenna survives there, uh, so you, you know, you, you, it depends on your location. So uh, again, I'm talking about 99% of the folks who buy antennas. The segue onto this screen, why I came to this screen is, I get this call a lot and I wanna take a couple of minutes to explain this. Um, we have published, wind area C, wind area G, which is EIA 222G, as well as projected. Now, maybe I should probably add a FAQ section on this or on our website when we have the time to do it. Uh, the, 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 the thing about the questions we get is, what's the difference between C and G? And I, I keep getting this question a lot. And the other question we also get a, a lot is, uh, you have said 19.06 square feet for your tribander. Now, I, I took this example of the JK mid tri it's a regular tribander. It's uh, three elements on 20, four elements on 15, five elements on 10. Now, I, I, I get a call sometimes and I say, well, uh, a comparable antenna spec says uh, nine square feet. Why is yours 19 square feet? My simple answer is you need to go find out how they came up with that number. Now, what's the difference? Uh, Kurt Andrews on his website has got a lot of, uh, lot of details on uh, uh, the uh, 222C versus the 222F and the G and everything. Uh, this, the C spec is a legacy spec. And the reason why we have to add that on our website is for one, one and only reason is that a lot of other manufacturers still use the C spec. And I'm not saying this in any other way, it's just out there. And because we have to field questions, why is your 19 square feet so high than the nine or 10 square feet product B is advertising? So that's the C spec and that's the G spec. Now, there's also another thing which you need to be uh, uh, look at. What is your tower? You know, I get this call all the time again. Uh, I have this, uh, my tower is there at 20 square feet. Great news. Is it, it please look very carefully and see if your manufacturer, Roan is very good at it. If you go look at Roan specs, they have rated it on a G spec, which is the, which, you know, the H is underway, you know, it, it's, it, but as of today, the most current one is a G spec. Now, at least that I'm aware of. Uh, you need to go to your, you know, Roan, Roan specs are for G, but you go look up some other tower, they don't say it. So you need to ask them whether it is a C spec or a G spec, because as an antenna manufacturer, I have no control over what square foot wind load your tower was rated at, because that's not my problem, or it's not something which, which we should look at, because it's something you should look at, because that's whatever your tower is rated for, you need to get the antenna accordingly. And if your tower manufacturer says he is only rated at 10 square feet on a G spec and you're getting a 20 square foot antenna, that's your problem, which I would say you should not be doing it. But that's a clear difference between a C spec and the G spec. And we also give you the projected. What is a projected area? I, I, you know, this, this is another topic. Um, I'm trying to use this forum to make sure that if you can get the word out. The projected area is, you know, you, you take a tube, that's a length by, you know, by width, by height. So that's, you know, that's the area. That's the projected area of the cylinder. So, so that's the entire area of the antenna. That's the, the, of all the elements. So that's the combined areas. The 16 square foot is a projected area. I also keep getting, getting asked these questions. When you say um, it's 19 square foot, is it at an angle, at a 45 degree angle or a 20 degree angle? No angle. There are only two ways you can get a uh, wind area. Either winds coming directly at the boom or the winds coming directly at the elements. You take the greater of the two numbers. 
So if you take a six meter Yagi, for example, uh, the, the wind area, the boom's wind area is probably gonna be more a two meter Yagi. The, the boom's wind area is probably gonna be more than the element's wind area. So in that case, the manufacturer is probably gonna use the, the, the higher number, which is the boom's wind area. In our case, most of the time, so I, at least that I'm aware of, yeah, I could say that, uh, is the element's wind area is always greater than the boom's wind area. So we don't take uh, the boom plus the elements, do, you know, look at the 45 degree angle, take, no, none of that stuff. The wind doesn't tell you it's gonna come from the left or the right or up or down, it comes. So it doesn't, it doesn't pick a direction to come. I mean, it, it knows the direction is coming, but you don't know where it's gonna come from, right? So when you see a 19.06 square foot, it means that that's the maximum wind load that the elements can put on that, you know, to your rotor, to your tower. So that's the wind area. So anyway, uh, wanted to make sure that this is a topic which we spoke about because it, it, it really, kind of puts in perspective when you are putting a quality antenna system out there, uh, you understand it so that you'll not have uh, failures uh, of whether it's a rotor or, the, or it's a tower, uh, you know, you just need to, I, 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 you know, there are a lot of mistakes we have seen over the period of time, uh, but, you know, most of the times your installer knows good, you know, if, you're in, if your installer says, you're pushing it, then you're really pushing it because they have seen the best, they have seen the worst. So your installers really, you know, you should be, I would say uh, they probably know better. Uh, this is one of our first, this, this again is a uh, four element full size 40. It's on a 44 foot boom and it's a 340 pound uh, antenna. Now, the reason I bring this up again is that it's a, it's a full size element. Probably the reflector is 77 feet or I mean, it's, you know, approximately or so. Now, why do I bring this slide up again? Um, these are 100 miles per hour rated elements. And you can see there are no element trussing. And the sag on this 40 is probably close to like 45, 40, you know, I would say less than four feet. But uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it looks pretty good on the air. Uh, you know, you don't have trusses up and down the uh, the elements. Uh, again, it's built right. So when you come to us for an antenna, uh, that's what you get. Now, the most important aspect of this uh, the, the, this antenna or any other antenna for that matter is that when you buy an antenna, whether it's a full size forty or the smallest antenna, which, you know, a C3SJK, which is a small tri-bander, the, the elements are identical. If it's a 20 meter element on a monobander or a 20 meter element on a, uh, a, a small tri-bander or a, uh, uh, or a multi-band, like a five-band antenna, like the XR5JK, uh, uh, bottom line is the element construction, the quality, the saddle clamps, the plates, they're identical. Now, here is uh, a, a simple example of uh, like, uh, you know, my good friend, John, uh, uh, he's got a four element 40 on the top. Uh, he's got a stack of tri-banders uh, uh, and of course, 12 17s and a, you know, a six meter Yagi stack. Uh, we have a lot of installations like this out there. Uh, you know, uh, th th this has been actually a very uh, interesting run for us where uh, a lot of stations, and I can say a lot of stations, uh, come to us for turnkey antenna projects, uh, all the way from the top to the bottom. You know, you, you, you populate them and uh, they, they come and they do it. Uh, one of our best sellers uh, is this tri-bander, which is called the mid-tri. It's on a 24 foot boom. It's, this is the one we, I, I kind of, uh, you know, refer to initially. It's a, um, three elements on 20, four elements on 15, five elements on 10. Uh, it's a very popular offering. And I'm gonna to try to see if I can share a, uh, a different screen so that I can show you folks. Um, this is also one of the, this is also a much, uh, no, I guess that's not the, that's not the right share. Uh, let me figure it out. Oh, here it is. 
I'm not sure what you guys are seeing, but I hope you're seeing the right screen. Uh, seeing, seeing the C31XR. Okay, you are. Okay, thank you. Thanks for that. Uh, so this is also, so we kind of absorbed the Force 12 line. Uh, uh, Force 12 has some fantastic antennas. Uh, one of our keys to our success has been the latest modeling tools. Uh, when you know, in 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 a, in a tip in a tip of the hat uh, to someone like Tom Schiller, when 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 he had done those multiband Yagis, some of these tools were not available, and and some of those antennas are pretty pretty good. When you electrically model them today, they are fantastic antennas. Uh, but some but for an antenna like the C31, we changed. If you if you look at the C31XR JK, which we have modified and optimized, and brought it out on a 30 foot boom. Uh, we took, we yanked off an element. It's a great tri-bander. It's a contest grade tri-bander. Uh, it, 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 it also sells a lot for us. Uh, it, it, what is the difference between the mid tri and the C31? It's on a slightly longer boom, 30 foot boom, but the 20 meter component, if you look at the C31XR and I have had, I, I don't want to mention the name, but I've had some contesters reach out and they have taken the, uh, uh, you know, they've gone through the pains of converting the old C31 and they have, you know, the reason is we came up with the, a, you know, the standard feed system. We used uh, two angle, uh, two, uh, two L angles. And with that feed system, we are able to, uh, you know, feed 10, 15 and 20, but the guts of the C31 is identical. The element positions are still almost identical. Uh, the old C31 used a, uh, a shunt coil uh, on the end, uh, 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 and we still use the same. So bottom line is we kind of made it better for lack of a better way of saying it, because it was a good, it's, it's a great antenna. It's still a good antenna. Originally the way it was designed, it was a good antenna, but we just uh, kind of optimized it. Uh, there were some, you know, on the 15 meter side, there were always, uh, the SWR was a, a kind of a, 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 I wouldn't say the word issue, slightly elevated. So uh, with this, everything is solved. You know, with our feed system, and we we you know we took one of the extra ten meter elements out, and we we were able to create uh, one of the uh, issues uh, that I'm aware of uh, from a um, mounting standpoint with the C31 was uh, I know folks had a tough time on ring rotors. Uh, if your cradle was too wide, you know it would you know it had a it had a very small uh, uh, narrow uh, width to mount it. So we kind of made that a I think the gap is approximately more than four feet now. So it, it fits on most of the rings. Uh, so that's how we made that antenna uh, a, a lot better. Uh, let me go back to this uh, uh, screens. Uh, if I can find it. Okay, I'm back here. Uh, this is a, <laughs> thanks Rob, in case you're watching this or listening. Uh, this was the picture provided to me by NC0B, Rob Sherwood. Uh, he has one of our two element 40s. I had out to uh, probably let Rob down because he did a lot of data measurements with this antenna and I have not had a meaningful way of uh, publishing it. Uh, but the modeling and the antenna pretty much agree most of the times. Uh, and uh, this is a two element 40 that Rob uses which is the same JK402 if you buy one from us or if you buy like a, a 6BA JK, which is also, uh, I'll, I'll go down the list. I'm seeing that uh, time flies. My wife kind of told me, you can talk about antennas for 10 hours. So one hour should go fast and just going fast. Um, we, uh, we decided to add this picture in because I want to show you, Rob decided not to even have the boom truss because without the boom truss, that boom is right there. That's one of the reasons why I brought this picture in. I had a lot of other two element 40 pictures, but I chose this one specifically because look at the element, that's a 40 meter Yagi element, that's 50 foot long elements. And you also have the boom and uh, Rob decided not to have a boom truss. Uh, so, uh, you know, and, and he goes through some bad weather there. So that's uh, pr pr pretty much our construction. Uh, and I have to brag a little bit here, right? So this is our three element 80. I, I have a lot of qualify, qualify, qualifying questions. When, if somebody calls us and asks, tells me, uh, I would like to know more about your three element 80. No, 
I'm asking the questions first because you, what kind of a tower you're going to put up, where and how, because the three element 80 is not for the faint of heart. That antenna probably, that three element 80, it's a hundred foot long element. It's on a 54 foot boom. It probably weighs close to 900 pounds. Um, Paul Nyland just recently uh, put up one at King Henry Singh's Yankee Yankee in Hawaii. He converted a two element 80 into a three element 80. Now, Mr. DeMontron has got two of those stacks, two of those three element 80 stacks. Now, why do I put this picture up there? Again, that's a three element 80. Those are 100 foot long elements and you don't see an element truss on them. The sag on these 80, 80 meter elements, 100 foot long elements are probably, uh, I would say less than three feet. When you construct, construct them right, these are 100, mile, 100 plus miles per hour rated elements. When you construct your elements right, you do not need to trust them, bungee cord them, do whatever you need to do. No, you build them right, they'll survive the test of time. Uh, the same way, th this is another picture I want to show you. Uh, this, this is in Montreal, north of Montreal uh, uh, with Howard. It's Victor Echo to Alpha Echo Delta. And uh, he's, he's got a two element 80 up there. And of course that's a 6B and the XR5 JK stack. Uh, I'm, I just noticed that I, time flies, I keep blabbering. Uh, that's the 6BA JK. Now we took the 412 design. I'm sorry, oops, somebody's audio is on. Uh, we took the 6BA JK and what we did was uh, we took the 6BA, it's a legacy force 12 antenna. It's a fantastic antenna. Uh, Tom had the 40 meter elements on the outboard side. And in other words, the two 40 meter elements were on the outside and the XR5 uh, was on the inside. Now we kind of redesigned this. We kept the XR5 part. Uh, anything that we have done to the force 12 designs, we kept the, it, we, we not changed the design. We just kind of tweaked it. You know, just to kind of let you know that, uh, because if you look at the old manuals, you'll pretty much see that most of the element spots, most of the element locations, they're all still the same. Of course, we brought in our element mounting, the you know the mounting hardware and the uh, the design and uh, uh, everything else. So that's a six BA. Now the reason I'm pointing this out is a lot of folks go back to V2 AED. He's got the 6B on the top and he's got the XR5s on the bottom. So you pretty much, you can stack the 6BA with the XR5, they are identical uh, because you know the XR5 component and then the 6BA, you, when you look at the manuals, you'll find that the 6BA, uh, the, uh, 10 through 20, 10, uh, 12, uh, 15, 17 and 20, the element lens, the tip lens and the locations on the boom are identical to the 6BA. It's just an addition of 40. So we kind of normalized this. Uh, this is a kind of a very popular antenna that sells um, in a lot, of, a lot of places. If you wanted to have a single tower and you wanted to have uh, a, 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 the best monobander that you can buy or you can build is a two element monobander. Uh, you get six dBi of free space gain on an average. Uh, you go to three elements, you get seven. You get uh, go to four elements, you get eight. So that's kind of how, uh, but you get six dvi from a two element uh, uh, monobander on a, a free space gain so that's the best bang for the buck you can get uh, this is one of our best sellers also it's a 2040 hawk we call it it's a five element 20 and a three element 40 uh, on a 40 foot boom um, uh, we kind of introduced this uh, antenna right after the eagle and it's been a very popular seller uh, because you know maybe we, we, we are focusing a lot more on the uh, more uh, uh, on the multiband Yagis these days. But uh, initially for us, uh, 2013, 14, 15, uh, these dual banders were big sellers because of the sunspot cycle at that time. So we kind of did a lot and uh, we, 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 uh, uh, we were able to uh, uh, work on this. So bo bottom line is, uh, uh, let, let, me, let me go to a different screen for a second here. I wanted to show this. Um, while, while we are doing that, I need to stop share. Okay. I guess my screen is sharing a stop. Okay. Uh, bottom line is we took a lot of time in making sure 
that the antenna is built right. Uh, we have not updated the gallery section of our website as much as we would like to do. Uh, we have to do that. But uh, I'd like to again thank Mike, uh, SV9CVY. He had, uh, he, man, is, guy is very good at the way he installs his stuff or assembles his stuff, but he take, took a lot of pictures. So he, he uh, did a lot of uh, uh, narration on his pictures and it came out pretty good. So if you, if you ever go to, uh, how do I sh share this again? I need to go and see if I can share uh, share screen. Um, so if you go to a gallery section, you will see uh, pictures from Mike uh, and other in installations uh, from, uh, from, 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 from a while ago. Uh, we've not added something recently, we should do that, but uh, it kind of gives you an idea of how, uh, what our antennas look like, uh, how they are constructed and, um, uh, you know, it kind of gives you an idea, overall idea. Uh, we, get, we get a lot of questions uh, on our monoband Yagis, uh, you, know, you know, even the four element 40 that we have, uh, is that an OWA? I cannot claim that they are OWAs because, uh, you know, you know in, in a purest terms with OWA, they are much more, the D1 and the driven are much more closer. Uh, however, we have not taken that approach uh, they are much further apart, and uh, and uh, they are not OWA. They are OWA type, maybe you can call it, but they are not OWA Yagis. These are not uh, the 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 benefit of uh, OWA is uh, you know it gives you a much flatter SWR curve across the band, uh, and no, so so that's that's another question we keep getting asked. Uh, but they are not. Uh, these are uh, optimized uh, uh, antennas. Uh, we have had a lot of luck. Uh, I personally, and this is one of, you know, you, you have to differentiate yourself uh, uh, with the other manufacturers. Uh, we focused on a lot of, uh, you know, front and rear and side rejection. Why is that? Uh, you know, if you compromise, I always say that an antenna, designing an antenna is like a three-legged stool. You know, you, you have your, uh, you know, gain on one side, you have your SWR and your front to back. These are the three legs. And, you know, you know you, 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 it's, a, it's a balancing act. I would rather have a 0 0.1, 0 0.2 dB of less gain and get another 5 dB of front to back or front to rear. Why is that? You hear things better. You, you know, that 0 0.1 dB ain't going to make any difference when you transmit on the other side. Uh, but... Uh, again, this, this has been our guiding philosophy in terms of getting a, a good front to back, good front to rear, and uh, having a nice compact uh, lobe uh, uh, versus spraying all over the place. Uh, hey, Ken, this is John, K6MM. I just yes, want to make sure that uh, we leave a little time for some q and I've got there's some folks that have lined up already uh, to give you some questions before we run out of time. Would that be I okay? I can stop. Okay. Anyway, uh, uh, before we do that, um, I'm going to, since I'm here, uh, our website is uh, jkantennas.com. And if you come here, you can uh, look at all the antennas we have. Uh, we uh, try to keep it up to date as much as possible. Um, I keep getting asked this question. I'm going to share one last screen before we go to Q&A. Uh, uh, I think I heard one of the previous presenters uh, touch upon this. Uh, there is a there is a kind of a problem. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a pandemic related issue, but uh, a lot of folks are hoarding uh, uh, everything possible. All man big manufacturers, whether it's metals or uh, whether it's a chip. Uh, so we we had that issue initially. We we still uh, we do have a good supply chain. Uh, we are we pretty much in the last uh, month or so we have stocked up enough tubing. Uh, so that's not our issue. We we have. We have enough raw materials on hand. We have, uh, you know, tens of thousands of pounds. Let me put it that way. Uh, I can show you a sample picture of one of our racks. Uh, this is what we have on our rack. Uh, uh, th th just, uh, just one side of it. So we have tens of thousands of tubing to, to make antennas. So that's not our issue at this point. Uh, and in fact, w w there were a couple of questions about that, uh, whether your supply chain was affected by the pandemic or not. You're okay. saying... So that's good. Uh, let me give you a question from Andy Faber, uh, Alpha Echo 6 Yankee, who op operates all the time at uh, Papa 49 Yankee. 
where they have several JK antennas. He said, speaking of Force 12, can you comment on your change from rivets to bolts and nuts for assembly? That's a good question. We, from the, from, so when we adopted the Force 12 line into our uh, line, we pretty much, uh, I would say, kind of whether it's the mounting or the element assembly or the uh, uh, everything we, 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 you know, there was a, there was a set method. This was the JK method and we pretty much absorbed. We brought the force to a line in, but the construction, the mounting and everything, we kind of adopted it to our standard and not the other way around. We, and they're also kind of uh, uh, the, 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 apart from the pros and cons of rivets versus screws, uh, from, from a pure logistic standpoint, as a manufacturer, uh, again, what I mentioned earlier was, you know, if you buy an 80 meter Yagi or a six meter Yagi, uh, the construction is very similar. So one of, you know, it's also very modular. So you can take the, the 20 meter element is that's on a tri-bander and you can make it into a monobander if you want. Uh, so what our goal was to be very consistent with, with mounting, with uh, uh, fixtures, anything. So kind of, um, uh, not, I'm not probably trying to answer the question properly. Uh, I, I, it's not the question of, I, we don't like rivets, but it's just that we adopted uh, to our standard, which was using uh, uh, proper screws and nuts. Okay, very good. Um, <clears throat> we have a question for, uh, from Stephen K, uh, G5VK, his name is Stephen Smith. I do not see multi-element beams for 80 meters on your uh, website, only the rotatable dipole, maybe that product is only special order? Yes. The reason being, it's not a special, it is a special order. The reason being, we do have the two element 80 and the three element 80 listed. Um, we have been very picky. I was told by a very good uh, 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 friend who kind of was very instrumental earlier uh, and I can probably mention his name. His name is Woody, Woody Beckford. Uh, he kind of warned me going in uh, eight, or, eight or nine years back saying, Ken, if you make an 80 meter Yagi, you better make sure it stays up in the air. And in order to put up our antenna, because he told me, do you know where the 80 meter Yagis are? All the 80 meter Yagis, they are on the ground. So that was the warning. He, you know, he kind of drilled into me saying that you need to build the best. Do not compromise. Do not compromise. This was from everyone. Most of my customers, you know, I, I, I uh, you know, if, I, if ever I said, can I make a different quality? I was immediately beaten down saying, no, you can't do that. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why we don't have the 80 meter Yagis on the website for the simple reason is that I have to ask certain qualifying questions because I just don't want this antenna going up somewhere. Um, uh, you know, if, if you really have an interest, we are there, you can send us an email or you can call us. A uh, quick question from Randy, uh, Randy Stares. I have an original C31XR. Can I change the feed system to your new feed system? We've been asked this question. One of the, one of the things that we are not able to do, uh, we are, first of all, we are a small business. Small business means there's three of us. It's not, <laughs> and, and the three of us uh, wear a lot of hats. And there's only one guy who can answer, if you call my work, there's only one guy who can answer the phone call if it's a technical question or a sales question, that's me. So the others, the guy who works in the back, the others, uh, they, they cannot answer any questions. So we are limited in terms of time and scope in trying to do any retrofits. Uh, so we normally do not encourage any of these uh, stuff, but I have gotten this C31 question from a couple of others and I have reached out to this gentleman who did it already. So probably we'll publish out a paper and you can pretty much convert it uh, with a uh, local uh, aluminum supply that you can find off of like Home Depot or in your case, I'm not sure where this gentleman was from, but you can, you can, you can easily do it. So uh, we, we, are, we are working on that. Question from Andy Hill. In reviewing the Nalasa 5 versus the XR5 JK, the electrical parameters appear identical. What other factors should be considered when deciding between these two designs? Between the, uh, this is actually, it's a, it's a good question. This is a question I get asked a lot. Um, fundamentally, one antenna is on a 12 foot boom. The other antenna is on an 18 foot boom. Now, the common um, 
mind says, oh, I have a longer boom, probably more gain. No, at the end of the day, it's a two element. It's a two element Yagi. One is a little uh, uh, compressed on a 12 foot boom with the spacing. And the other one is a little bit more spread out. The active boom length is not going to change that much. It's just kind of shifted a little bit here and there. So the so just because it's on an 18-foot boom, it's not going to produce more gain. And we are talking gain difference like 0.01 dB, which is theoretical in nature. You can't measure it anywhere. So uh, if you think, uh, OK, what's the downside? What's the upside? What do we have to? The 12-foot boom, again, if you have a small lot, and the 12-foot boom Yagi is, uh, is, is much more pleasing to your eye. That's what you get. Uh, but it's, it's uh, because the elements are closely spaced, it's also got a higher Q, which means sometimes when you have uh, 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 rain or something, you, you may see the SWR shift on those kind of antennas because of the Q. Uh, however, the XR5 is more, um, you know, it's kind of spread out on a longer boom that's going to give you a uh, little bit more of a stable, but performance wise, uh, you can have both the antennas side by side. I don't think you'll see a difference. Okay, and our last question from Jay Kamek, uh, N4 Oscar X-Ray says, for the uh, element to boom mount, will the stainless steel U-bolts fit an old C3? Uh, I don't know. If it's a two inch OD boom, uh, the, uh, you know, yes, you know, again, it depends on your boom. If the old C3 was a three inch, uh, two inch OD boom, then the u balls will fit, yes. Okay, actually, uh, and one more question from Jorge Diaz. Do you exclude VAT on a price when you buy from, uh, when buying from outside the United States? Actually, um, no, uh, because there is no, you know, for, for us, because you know we are a, we are a U.S. based manufacturer and seller, uh, there is no VAT here for us. So you know if, if I say the the antenna is thousand dollars, thousand dollars is what we ship out. So uh, I don't you know there's no sales tax uh, or anything that I deduct if you're an ex, if you're an overseas customer. So uh, no VAT does not apply in the case of the United States. You know if you're buying it somewhere from Europe, they have VAT not here. So so that technically uh, will not to any of the U.S. manufacturers. Oh, you can't see it. Maybe you haven't had time, but on the chat side, there have been several of your customers that are praising uh, the Navasa 5 and others just complimenting you in general about the quality of your product. So um, you've got a big fan base here. Ken, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we really appreciate it, and we appreciate the quality and the thoughtfulness that you put into your products. You can see, you can see why uh, people rate you so highly. Uh, John, I really thank you and the uh, folks uh, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, we missed Hamvention and everything for the last uh, <laughs> almost like, no, it's the second year in a row. Uh, this was wonderful. I really appreciate it. And I thank the, uh, the customers and uh, who are pseudo ambassadors and advisors, well-wishers. Uh, they have been the secret of our success and I really appreciate it. And thank you. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, you're welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, just to let you know that uh, Ken hasn't shared all of his secrets. Uh, you know, he's actually expanding his markets as much as he can. Uh, here's a photo of him uh, visiting one of his latest installations uh, for his new holy tripole. So uh, we wish you really good luck. <laughs> good luck with that antenna and the new uh, that new product line. <laughs> I'm you. I'm sure you'll be blessed with many dollars. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you. That was a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.